This is the Horse Radio Network. Hey, you're listening to Adulting with Horses, the best place to be if you can't be at the barn. We are your co-hosts and equine authors, Heather Wallace and Natalie keller Reinert. As Crazy Horse Girls, we don't take ourselves too seriously in the saddle or out. We celebrate the things that make us different. Join us as we talk about horses and pop culture and get a little weird in a fun way. Thank you for being a little weird with us. Natalie, nice to see your face. Heather, your hair is pretty and curly today. Thank you. I did not wash it. <laughs> oh, ooh, sexy. Yeah, in summer, you don't really want to wash your curly hair very often. You can rinse it, but you don't want to shampoo it too often because then it gets dry and frizzy. So the more oil, the better. Oh, my God. I feel like uh, you would do great in Florida then. Your hair would just be like waves of oily curls. <laughs> Yikes, I don't want to go that far. But um, I did notice that we so, you know, when we talk, we have the video on and we kind of sign in and my name today is Hobbity Bobbity and yours yes. is Natalie is a mess. <laughs> Hobbity Bobbity. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Um, <laughs> so I'm a cripple right now. <laughs> <laughs> which figures because I have four days off in a row and I was hoping to spend at the barn. And then last night, my dogs got into a big wrestling match and my American Staffordshire Terrier, who is big and muscled, rammed into the coffee table, which then rammed directly into my knee. Oh, my God. So I'm now crippled. You're broken. I'm broken. So I'm bopping around, kind of trying <laughs> to figure out how to get from one place to the other because, oh you know, God. still have to work. That sucks. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm Natalie as a mess today, but that's really just because I just, I just look a mess. I have no, <laughs> all I've done, I took the cat for a walk. I said hi to the horses. That's all, uh, all I did outside. And that was enough. <laughs> the rest, I've been in my computer for two hours today already. And uh, yeah, I just look like a disaster. So, so but that's, you know, you that's know. part of how I embrace Florida living is that I am a disaster. We're all disasters. A beautiful disaster. I am a beautiful disaster. Yes. That's what you should name yourself on the next call. <laughs> you should call yourself a beautiful disaster. We'll see if I remember that. I like the idea <laughs> of embracing it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, hopefully one day we'll get my internet in gear and we'll be able to do, like, video for, you know, YouTube or Patreon. But uh, I like, you had Queen of Darkest at one time. That mm-hmm. was a fun name, too. I yep. liked that one. You know, when I'm midway through drafting a few different things at once, I can get a little dark. Uh- <laughs> I don't think but- most people would realize that about you. That's the thing. And, and it's, it's the story that I'm working on kind of reflects that. Um, I do have a super like dark, depressed side and like my musical taste reflects that. And I am right. I'm revising a story right now that is about being in love with uh, a singer. And it's a very dark, depressed kind of band. And that's my my vibe. Big time. I like sad songs breakups and betrayal and nervous You're like break-ups. the drama like I they do. do yeah the drama I am more of a myself. I am more of a like lighthearted romantic comedy or like really terribly obnoxious Will Ferrell comedy type person well, yeah that's what I consume if it's like visual yeah but okay. for music I like my music dark I don't know why unless it's yeah. Polynesian music that's a vibe theme park music very into that. Okay. Uh, Hawaiian. Tell your tell your uh, thing, your speaker, whatever it's called, to play Hawaiian instrumental music and just vibe. That's wonderful. Okay. I okay. do that. Mm-hmm. When I'm driving, I'm more of a like a upbeat kind of. Uh, I love listening to Latin music. It makes me want to dance. It like brings me back to the days when I was dancing up in the club and stuff. And then <laughs> I, I was a Latin dancer too. I used to go to Latin clubs every week. And then um, I listen to a lot of, like, alternative rock, a lot of female singers, like, you know, just really kind of owning their dark feminine, mm-hmm. you know, as well. So I love – that's my that's my current vibe. 
Very cool. Yeah. When I'm driving, to be honest, I listen to a lot of Howard Stern. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> He'll get you through. I get sleepy as hell when I drive. And when I listen to music, sometimes I think way too hard, if that makes any sense. And um, Like you know, you're so analyzing you, the music or the lyrics? It, no, it takes me like into my own head, okay. and I start digging around, and it's not always great. <laughs> Hence the dark depressed the dark, music. <laughs> Maybe it's in my choices of music, but I am who I am. <laughs> you know, you got to accept who we are at this yeah. point in our lives. And yeah. I, I will say that uh, my music taste does change. My girls get in the car and they're, they laugh. They're like, so which mood are we in today, mommy? <laughs> um, but fun fact. So I have the kids home for summer. Right. Uh, enough said. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. There's no screaming in the background. So, oh, well, that's, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yet. It's like a countdown waiting for the chaos to happen. That's a device I like using in rom-coms as like the, uh, the, the friend or the, the older sister that seemingly knows better about life. And so, you know, the main character goes to her like, my life is falling apart because I'm in love with this guy. And she's like, you could come home and live like me. And then something crashes and she says, got to go. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite ways of, of working in the friend advice that just isn't going to be taken is like, see what kids do? <laughs> they, they ruin it. No, they, you know, it's, 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 this is going to be an interesting summer um, because the kids are older. They're 12 and 14. Uh, I'm working more, even though I cut my hours, I'm working more than I used to with them and I don't have regular sitting. So they're either coming with me, which was super fun and awkward on Tuesday. Um, (laughs) because, you know, like 20 minutes in, someone had to use the emergency bathroom at a a client's home. Of course. Okay. Of course. Uh, so that was awesome. And then, um, and you know, she was like, oh, let me get my kids dressed. And I was like, oh, fuck. God, I'm so sorry. Like, this is terrible. (laughs) Go to the Wawa. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, like, it's just that kind of chaos. Or I'm local and I go out for the morning, come back for an hour and a half for lunch and then go back out for two hours and then come back. And so I'm like back and forth, back and forth. And so it's all chaos. It's just all chaos. It's I mean, it's nice of you to come home at all. (laughs) Well, you have young children. I don't want to neglect cases. I don't think 12 and 14 is that young. (laughs) (laughs) It might be. You know, we're admitting it publicly, so let's say it's good of you to, you know, it's normal of you to come home, but I, if I were. <laughs> Their dad works at an office literally two miles down the road, so if there's an emergency, like, we're covered, but, I mean, it's just, it's all falling, it falls on me, really, to kind of change my schedule, which mm-hmm. is why I have the job I do, um, which is lovely, but then it adds a layer of stress to my summers. Yeah, I can see that. And the kids always end up, you know, kids always show up, you know, on some animal pro appointment there's always just call them interns these are my summer interns they have an expectation that restrooms will be available it's in their contract i apologize (laughs) no they're good and luckily a lot of my clients are moms too so you know they get it but that was kind of an awkward start to my week so and then the knee (laughs) incident so i do have a win this week though but uh we'll talk about that later yeah um but i want to to talk to you about I had this idea okay so self-care right I was getting a massage today and trying to fix my broken body and she was talking about because she's a horse girl she's a client she was talking about how the feeling the first time she cantered and this feeling of freedom and then the feeling the first time she went on a trail ride on a great horse and this feeling and she's chasing this feeling this dopamine rush this beautiful you know serotonin And um, I was thinking, my God, you know, I do that too. Like, is there anything better than the feeling of when it all goes perfectly? Yes. And then do we become addicted to that feeling, to chasing that high? Uh, Yes. Um, For me, even it's a feeling of rightness, where everything is exactly where it's supposed to be, finally. Um. And I don't, I don't know if that's what necessarily a high is, but it certainly spikes one, right? Like, yeah. oh, this is it. This is the right place at the right time for me. That's a good, good feeling. It's such a great feeling. Mm-hmm. And 
you know, I think, you know, I'm, I'm referring to it as like being addicted to horses, right? Because mm-hmm. for me, I can be very focused. And when I first came back to horses, I started like, you know, most people, I just maybe was riding once a week. And then very quickly, it became like, you know, my personality. Right. <laughs> You know, where like none of my friends wanted to follow me on social media because all I talked about was horses Mm -hmm. and my credit card bill reflects horses and Mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. And I realized I I made me take it a little bit far. But it's such like a great, healthy, I think, passion. Let's say passion. um, As long as you keep it from being truly an addiction, right? Like if you can stop anytime you really want to. Yeah, if you can (laughs) control that purchase, that kind of thing. No, I totally get it. I was talking to somebody literally about this yesterday where I said last year, I made a conscious decision to go full horse. And I hadn't planned on doing it. I thought I would be casual horse like I had been for several years. And that was going to be fine. And then I said, you know what, I'm really enjoying this. And um, the connections and the people the friends that I'm making are all full horse. And I would like to also be full horse. And I told my husband, like, look, this is what I'm going to do. And he's like, okay. And it wasn't my intent, but I'm so glad I did. Every single day of the week, I'm like, I'm so glad I went full horse. And it's just like all I do and all I think about and all I write about and all I I talk about. I was going to say, what's full horse? So that's 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 full horse. It's like, it's not like, oh, I have a horse. And somebody goes, really? You have a horse? (laughs) Like, there's no shock and awe, right? It's like, oh, we know. No, it's not that at all. It's like, um... Really, you did something that didn't involve a horse? And then you laugh and say, no. <laughs> Why would Silly. I? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it might have been right about the time we started podcasting. Whoops. Where I said, do you know what? <laughs> I think this is going to be 110% of my life. I think I'm going, just going for it. <laughs> I've, I mean, I feel somewhat responsible now, but also I'm like, you're welcome. I don't yeah, know like, what, what to think about that. Look how happy I am. <laughs> I'm just a mess. <laughs> but a beautiful mess. <laughs> I'm a beautiful disaster, as discussed. <laughs> um, and I still, you know, I have some other interests, but I think these are the best interests. These are the healthiest interests. Like you said, healthy. I'm I get a moderate amount of exercise occasionally. So there's that. Yes. Well, so listen, (laughs) okay, if you're going to be addicted to something, right? Like I I openly admit that I have a slight addiction to Coca-Cola. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am currently working on that. I am in a one-step program, which is like I'm getting one a day and I'm trying to put it off as late in the day as possible. Okay. That's my goal for the summer. That's funny. But I am like, that's my only source of caffeine. Right. So um, I'm trying to limit myself to like one a day. But like if you're going to be addicted to something, why wouldn't you be addicted to something that is, I don't know, gets you in the fresh air, gets you, um, you know, getting dressed in the day? Because sometimes when we have our dark, depressed moments, we don't want to get dressed or yeah. mm-hmm. we're so tired from work. We just don't want to leave the couch. So it mm-hmm. gets you outside. It gets you working, you know, with this amazing animal that you hopefully deserve. And um and it gives you a good feeling of accomplishment and hopefully confidence. Yeah. And I'll tell you what else it does. It allows you to meet other adults. Wendy Murdoch is an internationally recognized equestrian instructor and clinician for over 30 years, author of several books and DVDs and creator of Ride Like a Natural and the Surefoot Equine Stability Program, as well as the newly launched Whole Rider course. Wendy's desire to understand the function of both horse and human and love of teaching capitalizes on the most current learning theories in order to show riders how to exceed their own expectations. Make sure to visit thewholerider.com to sign up. You know, like most adults don't really have any friends or interests that take them out to meet people. And we meet so many people. And better than 10% of them are normal and okay to talk to. (laughs) And probably fewer than 75% are absolutely insane con people. So (laughs) there's that. 
I mean, we learn about judgment, <laughs> judging who we will be friends with. <laughs> you learn about listening to the red flags of yeah. the people you meet, right? Yeah, you definitely learn about um, sizing people up, uh, compulsive Reading liars. energy. <laughs> Right. Well, yeah. and then that's like a whole episode, which I think is uh, is so noteworthy. And that would be such a great episode would be to talk about like making friends as an adult, like horse, you know, horse friends. I think that's super important. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned for that because I think we got to. But yeah, it's um, that is something that I'm going to get dark a little bit. OK, because, uh, you know, that's not my normal. I'm very like, you know, overflowing and bubbly. But my when I first had Cameron who I was 31 years old. I was new in the area. I didn't have any friends. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody except my in-laws and my husband. And I, looking back that I had a little postpartum depression, like I was not in a good place. Mm -hmm. I, when I would go out, I was drinking heavily and I mean blackout heavily. And that's not like me. I'm not a big drinker. Um, Jokes aside, you know, it's like two margaritas and I'm done. (laughs) But, you know, getting back into horses was like a lifeline for me because I truly felt good about myself. Like I hadn't since having a kid. Like I, I actually felt like I had something of my own, something that made me not just a mom, something that gave me friends, something that gave me a purpose. Yeah. A hundred percent. The only times like I had Calvin very young in a very late in life neighborhood, (laughs) the upper West side has like more fertility clinics per block, I think, than most cities contain in their entire, because so many women, they move to the Upper West Side in their 40s and to start a family in their 40s. The professional women, they're CEOs, you know, they're very intense. And I was like 22. (laughs) And I used to get mistaken for a nanny, like the other the other women in the park were nannies, and they thought I was too. Um, So I absolutely I didn't know a soul except for my husband. And then when we um, we moved back to Florida, kind of because of that, because it just wasn't working. And the f- I just went and found a job with horses because that was the only thing I knew where I could be comfortable mm-hmm. and I could meet people. Um, and the same thing has happened again and again in my life where it's really hard to make friends as an adult unless you are all in on one thing. And so the two places I've made really good friends have been working at Disney because everybody can be, even if you have other facets to your life, it's very easy to just let that sort of swallow you up. And and horses. And I think the, of the two, horses has been way healthier, like on so many levels. Because it's not a fandom, which implies like a dependence on... Um, on a corporation at this point, but you know, like there's yeah. a, there's a dependency to a fandom and a lot of infighting and being with horses is like, I don't want to say it's wholesome, but it's wholesome, you know, like it's yeah. connecting with animals. That's serious. And then connecting with other people who are on these journeys. Like it's a, when you're a horsewoman or you're learning to ride or any of these things, you're on this journey of bettering yourself, even if you don't mean to be. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, And so there's like this whole intense piece to it that you're sharing with other people. That's huge. Well, especially for you, because it gets you out of the house. (laughs) Yeah. No, but it's true. And I, you know, I kind of, if you were to ask my husband, I don't think he knew what he was getting into when he told me to just start taking lessons again, because, you know, I went from zero to a thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Because that was my crutch that was it was something that made me feel good about myself it was something that got me to help lose the baby weight you know still working on that but you know whatever 14 yeah. years and counting please um <laughs> but but you know it started and then now he would probably say i was addicted like he would probably say i was obsessed which in my mind connotes an unhealthy thing mm-hmm. could i stop Yes, of course. I would hate to. Like if my horses were to pass away and I needed to take time off from them, of course I could. I would hate every minute of it, right? Yeah. Like if I couldn't afford to have my horses or, um, you know, it, I would hate it. But like I could do it, but mm-hmm. I don't want to do it. Yeah, you have con- you have control over it. Well, I was talking yesterday uh, to Corey about something that would, you know, I, I, I'm – 
talking about competing and stuff like that right now. And if eventually I made this other sort of decision, then it would kind of knock competing really out of the water because I'd be like traveling a lot and stuff like that. And it's a totally hypothetical idea. Uh, but I could do that. I could be I could be here part time and ride when I ride and it wouldn't kill me or anything like that. Like, as long as my horse is taken care of, it's fine. Um, but so many facets of my life would still be completely revolving around horses. Oh, yeah. Like, well, you know? my job, right? Mm-hmm. Like, even if I didn't have my own horses, I would still be surrounded by them several days a week. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and horse people walk away and take breaks all the time. And I think that's so healthy. I mean, I did it and I feel like it gave me a new sense of self because mm-hmm. I realized there were other things I could enjoy outside of horses. Yeah. I realized my life didn't have to revolve around them. And it it like it helped me grow up and kind of learn what I wanted to do with horses and what I didn't want um, just in general in life. Oh, definitely. But, you I know, I- no regrets about like moving to New York City, doing a ton of other stuff. No regrets whatsoever. I mean, if you if you told me when I was 18 that I was going to quit for a while and I wasn't going to be like focusing my, all of my attention on being an Olympic rider, I would have just throttled you. But <laughs> now, no regrets. <laughs> that's, an, that's an intensity, Natalie. I'm very um, intense right now. This is my third cup. For bonus bitch time with Heather and Natalie, all you have to do is visit patreon.com slash adulting with horses podcast. We try to make it easy by making everything as long as possible. <laughs> and it'll ask you for $5 a month. And that is going to cover all of our extra time that we spend coming up with really bitchy answers for you. Oof. See okay. how cute Orange Bird is? Yeah. Third cup. You do like your citrus. <laughs> I you. am drinking my Coca-Cola, my one, and I've just taken a couple sips because I've had three bottles of water so far today. And I'm trying to drink more water. So I'm healthier. Yeah, every now and then between coffees, I have a water and um, very refreshing. <laughs> yeah, I have to force it down. It's like eating broccoli. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, okay, I can do it. You know, like, I can just. I put lemon juice in my water. Oh, that's nice. I that have hydration packs. Down. I do like hydration packs, like for summer for the electrolytes. Mm-hmm. I've never have, tried like, those. Oh, they're great. Um, I was introduced to them by the endurance riders. Of so, course. Yeah, of course. Everything good I've learned in life is from endurance riders. <laughs> well, speaking of endurance, I rode four and a half miles yesterday. Yes, I need to hear all about this because <laughs> you were a little nervous and then you seem like you are you got a little high from it. I had full horse show nerves in my belly yesterday morning. Like I recognized them. So uh, uh, somebody invited me to go on a trail ride and... Um, I was like, yes, I'll go on a trail ride because say yes to things, right? Um, And I want to have friends nearby, like we've been talking about. I wanted to be more involved with like local horse people, and she happens to live very close to me. So I said, yes, yes, I'll go on a trail ride with you. And we've obviously talked about how I don't trail ride. I won't trail ride. I don't believe in trail riding. It is scary and bad. Well, at least there's no mountains down there. Yeah, mountains are really bad. Uh, we do have hills, which is interesting and fun. And then there's the added interesting bonus that, as far as I know, Ben had never been on a trail ride, like literally ever. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I started riding him when he was quite young, and I did like pretty much all of his basic work, and we didn't have trails. So, so my point being, I don't think anybody trail rode him before I started him. Sure. And we didn't have trail access at the place where I rode him before. That is priceless, by the way. I wish I had that. <laughs> yeah, we had none. So he had never, as far as I know, he's never been on a trail. But, of course, I live in the forest, so that helps. <laughs> well, how did it go? So tell me about it. So um, it was amazing. Like, he never put a foot wrong. He had his ears up. He was forward. He followed for a while, and then he was happy to walk alongside the other horse. The other horse being a mare probably helped. Ben loves the ladies. And um, you set yourself up for success. Yeah, I really do think going with the mare was a, a big piece of it because he, he would probably have argued with a gelding. Be like, I don't know you. <laughs> and it was a side by side trailer. So they had time to get to know each other on the way over. Um, 
Uh, we just had we had such a good time. I literally we talked the whole time. I talked till I was hoarse. Uh, I gave Ben if Ben decided he needed a bite of grass. Ben got a bite of grass. That was no problem. Went in the woods. Went up hills. Went in open areas. Only thing he spooked at were old round bales. Obviously, hay is oh, terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah, like he yeah. spooked hard at a round bale. He He's like, that looks molded. I'm offended. It was. It was moldy. And he was very upset by that. He's like, that, sh- that shouldn't be there. Not aesthetic. Should be in my belly. <laughs> Somebody should have eaten that last year. And now I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who did this? <laughs> it was actually really funny how hard he looked at the hay bales. I was laughing at him. <laughs> he spooked really hard when uh, the neighboring horse tripped hard. <laughs> and he went like, sideways oh my god are you okay it was, so, <laughs> it was self-preservation he was like other horse is going down i'm out of here <laughs> i was like ben That's where's the show i would do that to you if you fell i would run the other way too <laughs> okay. you're not taking me down with you it was so funny and then we were we were riding along like a two-track grassy road and it had poured in the morning like i woke up at 6 30 and it was thundering uh, and there was no rain in the forecast whatsoever. I picked up my phone, looked at the radar, and there's this huge thunderstorm headed for us. Oh, no. And I t- and my husband was out in the, in the living room already. And I texted him like, I manifested a thunderstorm because I was nervous. <laughs> 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 but it passed. So all it did was delay our ride. But so the grass was sort of just deep enough to hide puddles. And I guess he got up to a puddle, almost put his front feet on it, caught sight of the the like sunlight on the puddle. He stopped so dead. We were walking. I nearly teetered right over the front of him. <laughs> you know how a horse will stop at a jump and look over the jump? Mm-hmm. That's essentially what he did with this puddle in the grass. Suspicious. He was hilarious. And I was like, son. We're going to have to learn about water because we're going to go cross country later this year. So he figured it out. And I had cookies on me. That helps. Yeah. So I don't go anywhere without cookies, Obvi. And uh, so he went through the water. I turn, I, I held out my hand. He's like, oh, my God. Turns his head around cookies. <laughs> Forgot about those. <laughs> Did a few more funnels. Gave him cookies for it. Um, but it was, it was great. Nothing untoward occurred. There were no stupidity we had a really nice time i it was i got over a big hump i came home i ate lunch and i slept for two hours yeah <laughs> you're probably so like emotionally drained from that it was wild how i felt i felt like i'd accomplished something huge it was funny it is huge no, but that <laughs> but that is huge and that happened to me when i took delight off property too i like had a panic attack mm-hmm like, but I didn't have a panic attack until I got there. Like, I, I trailered him just fine. Everything was fine. I got him off, and then he wouldn't stop eating the grass to, for me to get on. So I, like, legit had a panic attack. And so I had to have someone hold him. Yeah. And then I was like, if he's going to be like this, I'm not going to ride. Well, the second I got on him, we both took a deep breath and just walked off. I mean, he was marching, but he never broke a walk. Yeah. And I felt so accomplished. I was like, I can do this. And you know what? I haven't done it since. <laughs> but I know I can. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, I had this idea in my head that work is work. And I'm like, we didn't even try. Right. We rode in the broiling weather. Yeah. But mentally, an hour that's and a such half. a big exercise for both of you. Yeah, it really was. People They're underestimate really- trail riders. Honestly, I feel like trail horses and trail riders literally have to be prepared for anything. They go through so many different things. They're probably better riders. They can outride anybody in the ring anytime. Yeah. I do think that's true. Yeah, it was um the I and I don't know if I hadn't I, t- I told you the other day that he did this massive spook at a deer and I just sort of sat in the middle of him and just kind of swayed. Yeah. And if I hadn't had that confidence building spook, I think I would have been, I wasn't really nervous in the saddle. I was, he was good to get, he was good to mount. And I was like, well, okay, he's going, he's going nicely. So I just kind of let it all out. Amazing. Um, If I had been waiting for us an unseat Natalie kind of spook, it might've gone differently, but I wasn't concerned about that anymore. So just, road no that's amazing well and and how did it feel like how did you feel about it after i felt like i said i felt like i did this huge accomplishment proud that i'd gone you know galloping and jumped 50 fences like it was 
I was tired <laughs> and just unbelievably drenched in sweat. It was so humid. <laughs> there was no evaporation occurring. Oh my um, gosh. So I was very tired and very wet. I came inside the house and I just like drank two glasses of water and ate a handful of blueberries and I was just talking and my husband's just watching me and then he's like, do you want to take a shower? <laughs> <laughs> but I said, you, like, I got to get through this adrenaline rush really quick. I was like, yes, yes, I do want to take a shower. And I had, yeah, I, had to, I, I did. I had like to let this outflow <sighs> yeah, like a thunderstorm down falling a bit apart. It. it was cool. I'm I so feel proud excited of you. just talking about it. <laughs> I'm excited talking about it. Yeah. You know, I, that's the one thing I wish I had actually was, and when I rescued Delight, it was with the intent that, you know, hey, he might not be rideable, but maybe I could take him out on the trails periodically, you know, one trail down and we did great. But, um, you know, I don't have a trail horse. Like I I love a horse that I did that we just, every weekend we got in the trailer, hauled off to some park and just went on trails. Like that would be a dream of mine. Yeah. Well, I mean, that. I One don't want day. to say that's tough with thoroughbreds, but that's... well, I just can't mount him from the ground. So, like, I can't. If we were to have a big spook, it's fine. I just if I come off, we're walking back. Oh, I see. I thought you know? about that, and I thought, I thought I'll walk back. Like, right? You know, you do like, what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I did consider that because. If he was hippity hoppity, like if, if something set him off and I, and I was on the ground and then I, he was bouncing around, I wouldn't be able to mount. So I'd be like, all right, let's walk. Because eventually we would probably chill out enough that you could find a log sure. or something and get on. Although the logs in Florida tend to be not weight bearing because like a little usually rotted. down because water rotted them out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> you have to kind of look for ruts and pretend. Yeah, one time I mounted Ferris. We so Ferris and I used to go out all the time when we had access to trails, and we had access to three hundred miles. Uh, I'm sorry, three hundred acres. Sorry, that's a lot of a difference. <laughs> um, and I used to ride him out by himself all the time, and we'd start off just going maybe half a mile, doing a quick loop and coming back, and then we'd extend it, extend it, extend it. Eventually, we were doing like four or five miles by ourselves. And um, I remember one time I got off because I met up with a friend and her kids, and we were walking. I was hand walking him, and then I was like, "Okay, he's fourteen two. I can do this. this. is a western saddle. I can I can mount from the ground." Did not mount from the ground. Um, so I had to walk him up to the berm on the side of a dirt road mm-hmm. and put him on the road, and then I was on the berm, and then I got on. And with one leg over the stirrup, he decided we need to go home, mm-hmm. and he started taking off at a trot with one leg in the stirrup. And so I'm like on one side of him like a vaulter. Oh my god! <laughs> I did make it happen. I did. You know, I only pulled a hamstring. It was fine, um, yes. but I did it. <laughs> And I was thinking, like, with delight, that's my biggest roadblock is if we're stuck, we are – there's no way in hell I'm getting a 16-2 thoroughbred. Yeah. Like, no way in ever-loving hell. Yeah. I just not fit. Uh, no, I that. couldn't do it because, you know, I'm riding a pony right now and I'm like, yeah. I really don't want to mount from the ground. I really don't want to mount from the ground. It's no, really- the older I get, the smaller my horses are going to get. I guarantee my next horse is going to be like a halflinger. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like a tiny little Mustang. It's going to be an Icelandic. That's 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 where we're going. I yeah, I fully agree. And that's I, we're only going to do trails. And whenever I see really like balanced ponies, like sort of square balanced ponies for sale now, I'm like. That's a good looking horse. I really <laughs> like that horse. I skim past new vacations. Like, yes, they're red supreme. Look at that little pony. I sure do like that Welsh pony. <laughs> so I will say too, like getting back to this addiction stuff, like, is one horse ever really enough? Because I do that too. I'm always got one eye out looking for a horse. No, I'm I don't want another horse. One hundred percent don't I wouldn't I would I'm, not, not think you time. want one. I would not have I'm time. Just- <laughs> Neither do I. All I'm saying is... I don't know how you have two riding horses. Well, I don't, because Delay's not really rideable, so... That, <laughs> I mean, you, I mean I lo- you know... I just... No, I absolutely, 100%. I don't look at horses like I would like to buy that horse at all. I look at them like they're cute, and I would like a horse like that someday. Yes. Or that is what appeals thing. to me. But... Like, I feel stressed out. You just stressed me out when you suggested that. <laughs> like, well, and no, you have no, your own property. No, 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 no. Yeah, but what would I, how would I take care of a third horse? I would die. 
the same way you take care of the other two. I mean, no, I'm just playing devil's advocate because like even, you know, I have this prop, dream property that I want to build and it hasn't actually happened yet. So who knows if it really will. But like when I do it, I told Jason, I said, I don't want more than four stalls. He's like, what if we need one for storage? I said, no, if we have four stalls, we're going to have four horses. <laughs> if we have six stalls, we're going to have six horses. This is just way it's going to be because I know me and I know someone – I get offered so many free horses because they have problems or can't be ridden. And, you know, Heather, you get it. You can help them. And I'm like, yeah, but, like, I can't afford another horse. I right. don't even have time for the ones I've got. So I'm trying to be responsible. I just see, like, I would I, – it's, like, the, the way the expense and work is exponential with a horse. And, the you know, like, the, the mini, <laughs> Manny – he eats more than Ben. <laughs> he costs exactly the same in vet and farrier. Sure. You know, and he's just a companion. He's not even meant to do anything except keep Ben company. Um, But he's the one that, you know, he'll call it because he just doesn't feel right. And so <laughs> I have to spend an hour dragging him around so he won't roll. He's the one that stresses me out. He's the one that stresses me out. It's Manny. Yeah. So imagine if I had a third one and be like, that would be another opportunity to like, I don't have chaos. another two hours a day to give. <laughs> I'm just managing and I'm in a, a semi-comfortable place. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and it, it gives me like, just, yeah, a nervous feeling to think about what if somebody else was ma- was out there worrying me, <laughs> you know, because I watch them constantly as it is. I just watch them walk by. Like making sure they're on their normal daily routine. (laughs) There goes Ben. There's Manny right after him. They just got a drink and they're headed back to the hay. Your sound just went out. I see a mute. There we go. Okay. I muted I muted because I had to cough. Oh. And then I thought I unmuted, but apparently I was just talking to myself. So (laughs) I think my mouse was right over the mute thing, so I didn't even see it. (laughs) (laughs) No, I was I, I don't even remember what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. So I had a really good week last week where I got to the barn like four or five times. And I got to give my horses a lot of attention. And I got to ride quite a bit. And then this week I thought, you know, I'll do the same. Haven't had a chance yet. And hoping over the holiday weekend to spend some time with them. But if I can't get this knee under control, it's going to be time on the ground. Because, right. um, yeah. I'm a cripple. So, and I say that, you know, not to, not to uh, play what was me or say like, obviously I'm not crippled long term. I just, I'm trying to be lighthearted about the fact that I'm disappointed Yeah, because I really was looking forward to these four days in a row to just go play with the horses. Oh, completely. I'm looking at, I think we're going to have heat advisories the next couple days. And so I'm looking at it like, I guess I'll take you guys grazing because my, Pasture is was seeded, and then it rained like for two weeks straight. But it was also cloudy, and so the grass is just starting to really come up. So they're not really turned out on grass right now. But I've grass in places I don't need it, like my driveway. So I could take them over to graze, and I feel like that will cool them down. Sure, but I don't know if I can really do anything besides walk under saddle while it's this hot. So I yeah, I'm like, uh, we were doing really great, and now I think we have to take like a little bit of a summer break. Uh, that's I know, that's the worst. And that's then the-, the only thing about summer, I think, really, is like everybody's so excited because they get to go to the beach or they get to go on vacation or hiking. But like for me as a horse girl, I just want to play with my horses. But if it's too hot to enjoy it or in this case, Ferris is really like he's sweating, but he's so bad with the bugs. Oh. He has to ride with the leggings and the um, a face mask. And he just sits there and he like – tosses his head the whole time because bugs are going up his nose and i didn't tell you i almost died um he he turned around i I stopped at the end to talk to my trainer and we're laughing about something and he like whips around super fast to get like a bug on his flank yeah and he got his reins stuck over my spur oh my god and i was like oh shit like we are like and and we both stopped and Robin just looks at me, and she's got this deer in headlights look, like she, no one wants to move fast. Oh my god! Because he can't trade his head, and if he does, like you know, there's a buckle and everything. But like my legs are in the stirrups; it's wrapped around my spur. I'm like, it happens so damn quick. 
and there's no telling like, thank god she was there because like i didn't have to reach over and get us both unbalanced to like fix it yeah but oh my god i was like how That's, many ways is this pony gonna kill me yeah so many there, there you can't even you could probably come up with half a dozen different death scenarios right there from yeah Wow, yes. that's very scary. I got my scary. foot slightly caught in a vine yesterday. Oh. <laughs> which was, I had a moment of my legs going backward. <laughs> okay, it pops free. <laughs> like, oh my God, what the hell just happened? <laughs> I know, it's so scary. Um, and, you know, I guess I wasn't, I wasn't nervous when it happened. But like afterwards, I was like, that could have been bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like When the, it know. starts flowing through, you're like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Oof, that's terrifying. Yeah, but he's like that when you're riding him. Like, he will, you'll be cantering and he'll dead stop, dead stop and throw his head down so fast to get a, like a fly on his leg. Oh my God. That, like, you can't help but almost roll off, right? So, like, <sighs> the amount of exercise this horse gives me in summer from not doing much but acting like a complete and utter, like, you know, Psycho. He's got ticks, man. That is really fucking traumatic, man. (laughs) It's a bug. You're all trying to get video, actually. I'm going to try to get video (laughs) this weekend of what it's like to ride Ferris in summer. And y'all, it's just, it's annoying. If you do a super cut of Ferris just freaking out about bugs while you're riding. (laughs) I feel like that could go viral. <laughs> I have a Pivo. I just am, like I'm really bad about setting it up. <laughs> Ever, I always forget it. <laughs> so, but there'll be a plenty of teenagers around this weekend. I might have to give one twenty bucks and be like, just film the shenanigans. <laughs> like, don't focus on me. Focus on the horse. <laughs> <laughs> My mom oh. saw a picture of me riding yesterday and it was towards the end of the ride and I had one hand on the reins one hand on my thigh my my middle was like jello like I acquired this kind of Western. ride for six hours slouch in the parks department yeah. when I was on patrol um and I clearly was doing it by the end of this ride yesterday <laughs> And my mom looks at the picture and she's like, look at a little Western there. And I was like, mother. <laughs> but comfortable. So fuck off, mom. I said, I know. I was like, I know, I know. I said, I swear I sit up right when I work. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I just had a post go viral on my Instagram. And it was like just asking people if they ride Western or English or Wenglish, right? Because sometimes I ride English, sometimes I ride Western, and sometimes I mix it up, right? And there's no right answer. There's no right answer. So if you start off as an English rider and you end the four and a half mile trail ride (laughs) in a Western position, right, where you're comfortable, you're sitting back on your seat bones and you're relaxed in the saddle, then like, go for it. Yeah. Do it feels good. Uh (laughs) <laughs> i felt funny about it because i haven't actually seen what i look like in the saddle in a really long time i have no idea i know what i feel like and i know what i've been working on but i don't know well, what it actually want, translates to we should get well maybe we should invest in a pivo for you but more importantly glenn had suggested a trip down to ocala over the winter so if i come down again i'll videotape you riding yeah okay so a pivo <laughs> The Pivo would be hilarious, though, if anybody saw what one of my rides looks like, like Manny following, Manny <laughs> pausing and turning when we start to trot. So he's doing a smaller circle, still Aww. coming after us. Manny knowing where my 20 meter circle is and stopping in the middle of it. Me trying to <laughs> kick Manny in the hind quarters as we go past him yelling, get out of my way, Manny. Like. I could sell subscriptions. You know what? That's a YouTube channel right there. Yeah, or at least a Twitch. I feel <laughs> Ride like Manny along needs- with me while I scream at Manny. Right. I think Manny needs so his in own the way. He's book. getting worse about it. He said, "Don't write my brother." He knows I have treats. Oh. No, I have never given him a cookie while I'm riding because I can't reach him. Even if I wanted to, sure, he's below my stirrup. I can't reach that far. <laughs> Um, and you know, I only, I, I just have the cookies on me. It's not a, but he knows and he won't leave us alone. Oh my God. That's adorable though. Now I have Well, that's, to- that's similar to Delight throwing a huge hissy fit 
because I'm riding Ferris and he's separated from us. And it's not Ferris because he could care less that Ferris is out away from the paddock or in the barn. Like Delight doesn't care about that. But if Delight wants to play with me and I'm playing with Ferris, he will throw the biggest temper tantrum. And so I cannot ride with Ferris with Delight loose or it will we'll all will all it'll be a black stallion situation. Oh my like God. he loves to rear when he plays. <laughs> so it's no good. I honest and you know I was just gonna say that I'm on the verge of of petting Manny somewhere while I ride, but Corey was running this morning and yelling at Manny for getting in his way while he was running. <laughs> 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 he was, Standing deliberately in the in the in the pathway, just in the way. He's such oh my a little God. dick. <laughs> He's like, "This is my paddock, get out." <laughs> I don't know. He is so insane. You should see I him gallop it. whenever Ben leaves. Mm. It's impressive. But I practiced. Um, I took Ben down the road a few times so that M- Manny would understand. He always comes back, and. Um, and so now he just stands and waits. He just stares oh. towards the gate. Like, someday my brother will come home. <laughs> That's good. And they honestly, they don't really have much of a concept of time. So eventually he'll just wander off and go eat grass. And then he'll be like, you're back. Yeah. Yeah. I was worried about it because, you know, it's hot. And so if he was going to be running around, I didn't want him to drop dead. So then I'd have to, like, source a whole another mini. It'd be a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> you're so callous. You're like, oh, my God, Manny. Oh, well, next. Oh, um, my God. Uh, no, I would feel bad funny. if you died. That's too funny. Uh, I, take, I know you love your little I take Manny. really good care of him. Thank yes, you, you do. Uh, well, but, yeah. speaking of taking good care, <laughs> I want to talk and switch quickly to the adulting wins of the week. Because, Natalie, we've got a big one together. Did you hear that we won? number one podcast at the American Horse Publications Awards. I heard. Do you believe it? Uh, Still working on that part. (laughs) Right? I still have trouble believing anyone listens to our asses. (laughs) I know they're really here for you, so. Well, you know, the fact of the matter is we have uh, a couple of reviews on Apple Podcasts. That's pretty much the only place we have any reviews. And most of them are five star and several are one star. So <laughs> it's a it's a selective mix. You love us or you hate us kind of situation. Right. Um, but there's a lot of judge. I don't know how many how they judge things with American Horse Publications, but they have a long list of judges. So if yeah. more people loved us than hated us, that's a good place to start. And yeah, best freelance equine mm-hmm. podcast yeah so How non-business related about that i can't even believe it it's kind of insane because we've only been doing this since june of last year so I know. it's literally been a year yeah happy anniversary by the way yeah thanks <laughs> <laughs> happy anniversary we should have had a party but we're busy women uh, <laughs> and we forgot yeah that's true <laughs> I, yeah, it's crazy to get – getting an award in the first year, um, I really would have expected more of a shakedown cruise than that. But I maybe a lot of podcasts don't even last a year or two. It's like a restaurant. You know, they always go out of business. <laughs> oh, come on. I would like to think that we somehow resonate with people and that maybe people understand what we're trying to do and how lighthearted we're trying to be and authentic and – it does make me sad to read reviews that are terrible. So um, I really hope that that's not the overwhelming majority. <laughs> well, they're funny. I'll give them that. The reviews that are terrible are quite funny. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> that makes me sad. I, I, I purposely don't read reviews because, like, obviously what we do, you know, I everything I do, I put 100% into. So I yeah. feel like I feel bad if people don't like me. It's odd know? to me. Like I saw the reviews the other day because I was sharing a link with somebody and I glanced at them. Um, I typically don't look at reviews because, you know, as an author, looking at reviews would be like the number one way to accidentally quit your job. <laughs> yeah, it makes. <laughs> but you it stop, is funny right? to me when somebody goes, "I disliked this so much that I need the entire world to dis- to <laughs> dislike it with me." <laughs> I will leave one. What? Star I mean, that's what people. That's what a one star review is, isn't it? 
because you're leaving her to warn other people. You're yeah, saying, to stay away from I just like this. You should avoid it. What? It makes me sad. <laughs> like, what? Like, who hurt you? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, why is your life so hard? Exactly. Yeah. Also, just don't listen to us. If, yeah. If we're not your cup of tea, that's totally fine. Well. But, like, don't make me feel bad. <laughs> uh, there's gin in your cup of tea if you're hanging out with me. Let's just put it like that. <laughs> Well, you know, um, I don't, you know, obviously we don't want to be everybody's cup of tea. And a lot of, we don't, you know, our big thing was like, we don't want to do interviews, right? And that's like a lot of people really, they like listening to interviews. That's their jam. And so they're like, what what are these women talking about? We're talking about stuff. What stuff? Stuff we like. (laughs) That makes sense. That makes sense. Are they experts? No. (laughs) Why would I not pretend to be? Yeah, it's just, it's like, you know, being casual isn't for everybody. Some people are very serious, very serious all the time. I'm not. No, that's boring. <laughs> I know that's, you know, good for you. But like, I you, I don't know. Well, that makes me a little bit sad. So I'm going to hold on to the fact that at least the media likes us. <laughs> <laughs> it's not usually like that. <laughs> we did it backwards. <laughs> No, it's a, it's only two one star reviews. If that makes you feel any better, it's only it does two. make you feel a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. the one's really old. It's from like a year ago. We that was just... like from when we first started. Yeah. That was the one that was like, oh, these people love their own voices. Yeah, and we do, right? We totally love our own voices. I mean, if we didn't like to talk, why would we be doing a podcast? Yeah, so I'm confused by that. But cool. And the other uh, the other one was the one about production. And if you're listening, can you like email me because I didn't hear the problem. <laughs> I listened to the episode. It said the music was too loud. And I listened to him like, the music's all the same level. So I didn't really understand. And I don't think we use that. We don't even on that platform anymore. So yeah, I think that was a platform thing because you couldn't adjust the levels of like the, but it wasn't different even. Yeah. So it was like, maybe she was accidentally turning up her radio or something. (laughs) Or maybe we just like, she was like falling asleep listening to us and we just jarred her awake with a transition. (gasps) Yeah. (laughs) That were very boring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it was one of the episodes where I was really tired because I can be kind of mon- mon- monotone when I'm really tired. It happens. You know what? I don't. I think we should take it as a uh, constructive criticism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And listen, you know, you and I both know that like sound has always been an issue. Um, like episode five was the worst and I literally <laughs> cried over it so bad. Um, and I still, I wanted to pull it, but then I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to pull it because we're not perfect and we are freelance. We do this on our own. Yeah. We don't pay anybody to do this. We don't get paid to do this. Mm-hmm. Although we, you know, if we have sponsors, that's awesome. And we would love that because it would help us pay for everything. Yeah, because it's not free to make. <laughs> it's not free to make. So it just costs us money. Yeah. But, you know, it's also a learning curve. Like, again, mm-hmm. first year, I think um, I think we're on the right track. The, yeah. Yeah. If we're going to do like a, an annual retrospective right now in this place, then I would have to say, yeah, I like the way things are going. <laughs> We're uh, we have a good groove going, and we have a really great Facebook group. And oh, they're so great! And um, the Patreon has come on board, and so you know the number one thing, like not screaming into the void with a podcast, is having a community that you can chat with in between episodes. And I think we have so much fun. So, oh, it's so great! And you know what? I mean, the feedback we're getting from like Glenn, who has been you know a mentor over who you know created the horse radio network and the horses in the morning um he's thrilled and like the fact that he wants us to be part of their community and Mm -hmm. the equine network and everything like that that's such like a a good feel good moment for me it's like a warm hug when he says something nice because whenever he calls me i feel like i'm in trouble with dad (laughs) you know and so when he says something nice like oh Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah well nobody knows equine podcasting like the person who's run the world's longest running daily yep. podcast, right? Horses yep. in the morning. Yes. Yeah, so, yep. and I like that, you know, he's, that becomes part of our community when we go to expos like Equine Affair and, you know, people, HRN, Equine Network listeners come over and hang out with us. I love that. And we go and visit with them at their booth. I apparently 
the other night right before bed, sometimes I open up my phone in the morning and I see the last thing I was looking at and I laugh. And the last thing I looked at the other <laughs> night apparently was um, exhibitor like booth information for Equine Affair. So I guess oh. I went to sleep dreaming of us having our own booth. I don't know. <laughs> because that would be so fun. It's so fun to meet people and like have a meeting place. Yeah, you and know. have them pop in, maybe yeah. pop on the podcast. Right now we, we hijack um, Jean's bookstore. Which is great. Yes. And I play Virginia Virginia Crane Books has been much so more good of to that. Us. Yep. Much more of that. Um, so I guess late at night I got big empire building dreams about. I was like, I what if we had this? I remember now. I said, what if we had the space next to the bookstore? Well, that would be amazing, but I think it's too big. <laughs> Maybe across. Well, it depends on the on the venue, I guess. Um, yeah, I was like, what if we had the booth next to the bookstore and we had like drinks and cookies? And <laughs> we just went back and forth. <laughs> that sounds amazing. It would be like <laughs> Natalie and Heather's hospitality haven. <laughs> like, come hang out with us. We need friends. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> oh, by the way, we have books in a podcast, but that's cool. You yeah. Know, if For you, every if you hundred look, cookies yeah. you eat, you have to buy a book. <laughs> Let's be fair. <laughs> We got to pay for the cookies somehow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the trip. Yeah. Oh, uh, so. yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to that because that'll be fun. Me too. I'm sad you're not going to be at Briar Fest. Briar Fest is coming. I've never been. I haven't either. I'm terrified and excited. It's going to be fun. You're going to have a great time. But when is that again? It's mid July at Kentucky Horse oh, Park. Oh, I'll be in Vermont. It's going to be, you're going to be much more comfortable than me because it's going to be like in the 80s and stormy probably. <laughs> and I'm going to be in the indoor arena, which is not air conditioned. Yeah, but I'm working the Vermont 100, <gasps> which means I'll be up from 4 a.m. until f- at least 7 a.m. So it's like a 24-hour ride, 100 miles. Uh. I'll be scribing with the vets. So I have to be outside and I have to stay up all night. Ooh. But it's so fun. Well, that's what counts. I mean, I'm going to sleep all day Sunday after that. But, you know, hopefully it doesn't rain. That would be terrible. <laughs> We're right into the two-week forecast now, so you can start getting an idea of what might happen. <laughs> I'm afraid to look. Um, <laughs> the good news is I usually bring my car and I drive the vets around. So when we get to the next stop and wait for the riders to come in, we can sit in the car. Like I can yeah. set up a little camp situation, like if it's really pouring rain. So we don't have to be out in it all day. And I have my running out coveralls. So I guess I could always pull those out if I could fit into them. I know? have my adulting with horses shirt to wear. <gasps> I yes, buy her I my one. sun shirt. Yeah. So I'm actually, I'm talking to the person that's embroidering. She's a local girl here in the Ocala area. And so we're working on sourcing these sun shirts so that we can all look super cute at events and endurance rides and equine expos and our adulting with horses outfits. Oh, that's perfect. So any of our listeners, if you guys are interested, can you just shoot us a message um, on, I guess, Facebook is probably the best on the adulting. What's the best way to get in touch with us? Well, By email? I would recommend if you're on Facebook, jump onto the adulting with horses um, Facebook group. Yeah, and that's the best way. Yeah, and there, there we'll we'll have like a featured post there about the shirt, so you can give us some info. I've already got the post up. We'll just feature it, so it's easy to find. And just like make a mention if you're interested. And keep in mind, sun shirts are going to run between seventy and a hundred dollars. That's just the nature of the material they're made out of, and that's actually the low lowest price I've really found because when I was sourcing them to begin with, I was finding a lot of like 150 and up for custom sunshirts. Yeah, shirts. well, and you want to try to get a bulk discount too. So the more people who order it, the, mm-hmm. the lower the price can exactly. be. Exactly. So I, I thought she had a really good price to begin with. And then I would like to, you know, get a huge order together so that she can give us a deal. Um, but they're not like $20 t-shirts. These are tech fabric with mesh and stuff like that. So maybe I'll put together a little order form for people. Mm-hmm. And then that way we can get their like name um email an address and then we can find out how many people want and yeah. then we could send an email when they're available and make sure that people still want them and then that way we have an idea of how many to order yeah so we'll set up an interest list and we'll have that pinned in the Perfect. facebook group and if you're not on facebook which i hear is a thing and um good for you send an email to um hello at adulting with horses podcast.com and uh, I check that email occasionally, and I will check it for this. <laughs> Thank you for being a little weird with us, Horse Girl. If you like what you hear, make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your player of choice. Follow us on Instagram 
at Adulting with Horses podcast, or even better, join our Adulting with Horses clubhouse on Facebook, where you can become part of the show. Also, it's a great place to meet other horse crazy women.